Okay. It's the right time. Um, okay. Good luck I and take start. it away. Yeah. <laughs> I won't give you your time. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Diago Ceccarelli, and I'm here with Sambhav Kotari. And uh, today we're going to talk about learning to rank, explain for dinosaurs. So before we go into the learning to rank thing, uh, a bit about us. Uh, we are both software engineers at Bloomberg, and uh, we work on um, search relevance uh, for news. And this talk is called Learning to Rank Explain for Dinosaurs because the team where we work is called NSRX. Uh, this uh, stands for uh, New Search Experience. And we basically work on uh, making the user experience in news better for the users. So we own all these services that improve the quality of the results, that help users to find better news and to browse the collection that we have. Um, yeah, so here we have a dancer. So just a few numbers about our engine. Uh, we have around 300,000 users, and uh, we receive uh, 16 million queries per day. Uh, we have really tight constraint on latency because uh, some of the users use, do trading on that, so they really need to know when something happens as soon as possible. So uh, we have 100 milliseconds uh, timeout for indexing. So like the story, when we receive the story, the constraint is that in 100 milliseconds has to be searchable. And um, a query has to take less than 200 milliseconds. Um, as for volume, uh, we, you know, journalists, as, uh, Bloomberg as a, a journalist, journalism department, and so there are journalists, journalists all around the world writing news, but they also acquire uh, news from other news wires like the New York Times or El País. Uh, they also have an agreement with Twitter, so like we also index uh, the full stream of tweets, and this makes uh, a lot of news. So every day we receive around 2 million news stories, and um, at peak time uh, we, can, we have to index uh, 500 stories uh, per second. Uh, and in total, at the moment, we have six, uh, 650 million uh, stories in the index. Uh, search comes into different flavors. We have the normal search Google style, where you go search for a company or search for a country, and you get back uh, top 10 results, let's say. Uh, and then we have the what you call alerting, that is more Twitter style search, where you subscribe to a query, and then in real time uh, you get the news uh, as soon as they happen. So like you can follow a company and see in real time news about, I don't know, uh, IBM. <coughs> and uh, for this we have like 1 million and 500,000 subscriptions. So the, in every moment we have to notify uh, more than 1 million users with news. So that's all about uh, news search. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, learning to rank, and a uh, short overview. Uh, how many of you use learning to rank for search here? Can you raise your hands? One, two, yeah. OK, so good. So we're going to talk about how this technique called learning to rank works from scratch. You don't need to know anything. The only thing that you need to know is that when you do a search on a search engine, you get a ranked list of results, right? When you search on Google, you get results one, two, three, four, five. and this is achieved because the engine gives a score to each uh, document that is uh, just a number. Uh, and then, uh, so it gives a score and then the documents are sorted by the crescent score. That's all, the only thing that you need to know. Okay, so, and we are going to explain learning to rank in four steps. So there are four steps that I'm going to describe. And then after, Samba is going to show you a demo that shows all the steps. So you'll see how to build uh, learning relevance with learning to rank from the beginning. So what is machine learning? What is uh, learning to rank? Uh, learning to rank is basically using machine learning uh, to improve the relevance of uh, the results of a search engine. Okay? And why we want to do this, uh, I have a nice example. So some time ago I was uh, writing slides uh, about learning to rank. And uh, when you implement learning to rank in uh, Lucene and Solar or Elasticsearch, uh, one of the core points of the code is this object in Lucene that is called query. Okay, it's query.java. So I wanted to check something in the implementation of the class. So I went on this website, 
uh, that is quite famous and I like it a lot. We use it at work as well. And I searched for query because I was looking for that particular class and I got these results. And that was not what I was looking for. I was looking for the class query.java. So I refined my query. I changed it a bit to try to get the result. I, I wrote query.java and I got this. Okay, again, not what I'm looking for. So I try to do what I do usually on Google. I put it in quotes so that it, it means like I want to match exactly this string and I got this, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and this is like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny, but like it happens to everyone in search, right? When you put on a search engine, this will happen. It happened to us, it, it happens to them, but it's, it's totally natural and uh, it's, uh, bad, but uh, happens a lot. And uh, that's why there is learning to rank, and that's what le learning to rank is trying to solve, okay? So what is the point here? So I have a search engine, okay? And uh, so what happens is that I have my query, so this is the normal flow. I have a query, I search for something, and I decide that some results are relevant and some results are not relevant. So in this case, we have in green uh, the relevant results and in red, not relevant results. Okay, and in this case, um, how I assign the score to my documents, I use this uh, formula here uh, that is called TFIDF, and it's a standard like uh, uh, the default way that uh, Lucene and Solar use to rank the document, and it's a very uh, base score that is basically looks at the frequency of the term in the document. So this term, for example, contains 10 times the term Solar, so it ranks higher. Uh, now Solar and Lucene and Solar don't use TFIDF, they use something similar, but it's the same concept. So base score, I got these results. And uh, I decided to tweak it because I'm not happy with these results uh, at the end of the list. Uh, so I multiply the score by uh, 2.3. It doesn't change anything because I'm just increasing the score. So all the documents will still have the same score, but I try to do this, it doesn't really work. So what I can do, um, easily in, um, in Solar on Elasticsearch is that I combine it with other things. So I can say I compute the score of the query on the title and the score of the query for just the description of the document and I combine these three things together multiplying by different uh, factors the, the score. And by combining these three together I get a different score for each document so that affects my ranking and now I get the relevant result here and the relevant result here. And I can keep doing that. I can add like, uh, well, let me look at the previous click that people did. Uh, let me look at the recency of the document and I can end up with something that looks nice uh, where I have the two relevant results on the top and I am happy with that. Send my new ranking uh, score in uh, production and release to all the user. And then what is gonna happen is this, that uh, I am, uh, for my query solar, I get the top two, uh, two relevant results on the top, but then when I start to look for other queries, I get like, uh, for this query, uh, everything red on top and, and so on, right? So, and this happens a lot, like people try to tweak the ranking function manually and they get these results. So, that's what learning to rank is trying to solve, it's uh, make this automatic, okay? Uh, because the problem with this is that you really need to be an expert to, to know how to tweak. You really need to know your domain. Like uh, I work on financial news and I didn't study finance, so I'm not, I can't really tweak the, the ranking function manually, okay? So what are the goals of learning to rank? Uh, don't tune relevance manually, uh, but just let the machine do everything for you. And, uh, and also, um, so at Bloomberg, we decided to implement this uh, for solar uh, when I joined the company. And the, the one of the targets when we wrote uh, the, this plugin that allows to do learning to rank was uh, to also make easy to experiment. So have the possibility to plug different types of uh, techniques to do learning to rank and make the thing easy, okay? So we're gonna start now with the four steps uh, before we start just an overview of how learning to rank works. So this is a normal search pipeline. We have a user querying for something. Uh, the query goes to the index, uh, it is a Lucene index. And then uh, Solar applies this, uh, Lucene Solar, Lucene applies this uh, TFIDF scoring 
that is the score that just looks at the frequency of the terms and then uh, it retrieves the documents with the highest score. So in general, like uh, Google use case, 10 top results and, uh, and it returns uh, the documents to the user, right? In uh, learning to rank, this thing is changed. So instead of retrieving top 10 results, we retrieve, let's say, uh, 1,000 results for the query. And then uh, these uh, uh, 1,000 results, uh, they go through this block that is called feature extraction. Uh, I'm going to describe what is it, feature extraction. And then they go through a learning to rank model. And uh, this learning to rank model will uh, look uh, at the documents and produce new scores. And so we reorder this 1,000 document according to the new scores. We select the top 10 documents in the new ranking, and this is the results, OK? So I'm going to go through all these steps now. And uh, so the first one uh, is not feature, but is training data. Because if you want to train your model, you need examples. And this is how you're going to um, learn how to give better results. So how does it work? Uh, what is a, um, training data? Training data is just uh, a set of queries. And for each query, you need to know uh, which documents were relevant and which documents were not relevant, OK? So it's just this. You have a set of queries. For each query, a bunch of documents that were important and documents that were not important, OK? How do you produce this data? There are two major ways to do that. Uh, one way is uh, using explicit data. So you create an interface. Uh, you ask some annotators to type some queries and to tell you uh, which documents are relevant or not relevant for each query. Um, you can use like, uh, you can pay people, uh, you can pay experts to do that in the domain. Uh, there are websites like on Amazon, it's possible to spin jobs where you ask users to annotate. It is in general very expensive to do that. And the other way is using implicit data. So if you have users in your search engine, you can look at the interaction, right? If I search for something and then I keep refining my query, that's not a good sign. It means that all the documents that I skipped by refining the query were not relevant. I was not looking for that. If a user click on a document and spend some time on it, it means that uh, it's, in, it's interested in the result, so that might be considered a relevant result. So there are these two approaches. Uh, they all have uh, pros and cons. Uh, as I said, explicit data is very clean because the annotators will tell you exactly what is relevant or not, uh, but it's quite expensive. Um, while implicit data is easy to produce if you have users, but it's very noisy. And sometimes it's so noisy that you can't really learn anything from that. OK? So moving forward in the search pipeline, we have feature extraction. So this is the first thing that you do after that you retrieve 1,000 documents. And um, you need to extract these features. Now, what is a feature? A feature is just a number that describes uh, something in your document. Okay? So it can be like if the query matches the title, so just a Boolean. Uh, it can be the length of the document in terms or a popularity score. Okay? So how many views these uh, documents got in the past, for example. Okay? Um, so just to give an example, here I have a query, uh, the ticker of uh, Apple, and I got two documents for my query, and I asked the, I produced the feature for these two documents, okay? So um, we have the feature, a query matches the title, here is zero because it's false, here is one because it's true, Apple is in the title. Uh, we have a feature like is the document from Bloomberg.com, and here is zero. And here is one. We have this feature with a popularity score. Uh, we can see this is more popular. You got 3,000 um, views, and so on. So it's just like coming out with features that you think might correlate with the fact that uh, the document is relevant. So, for example, in the example with um, GitHub, you can have uh, does the query match the name of the class as a feature? Okay. Um, so these are features, and then. The next step, once that you extract all your feature vectors for the document, is to train a model. Now, what is a learning to rank model? It's just a way to combine together the values of your feature 
to get the score. So it's similar to what it did at the end by tweaking the uh, ranking function, but it's done automatically. So you, a model, for example, might be the one in the first slide, okay? I'm just getting a, um, a multiplied by seven if the query matches the title, some in 42 plus is executive, and then another number for, uh, multiplied by popularity, okay? This is a very simple example. Uh, it's called a linear, a linear model. The, there are much more complicated ways to train a model. And um, the way you train is that you get your training set, and for your training set, you try to predict the label uh, according to the, by combining together the features, okay? So you have labels that might go from zero to four, and then you try to find uh, the best way to fit the feature together over the training set and predict the score. There are multiple ways uh, to train, as I said, and there are three big families. Uh, there's a family called pointwise that was the first approach proposed for learning to rank in the 90s. Um, and pointwise is basically this. You try to predict the score um, a co by looking one document at a time. So you just look at a document and uh, you try to predict the label, so if it was relevant or not. Then there was a, another big family that came and it was much more better that is called pointwise, uh, sorry, um, pairwise method. So here in pairwise methods, you don't look at the score, but you look at two documents and you want to predict which one is coming before. So you're trying to predict if I, do, if I give two documents for a query, which one is the best one. And once that you have the comparison function, you can rank the document because you have a function that predicts who comes first, okay? And then there is the final method, I mean, the final family that is the one used now by search engine like Google or Bing uh, that they are list-wise method and they just look at their own list and they try to optimize their global ranking, okay? Um, so as I said, like this method that are list-wise, we're gonna show you a list-wise method and they're usually based, based on families of trees. So you have uh, many trees and each tree says something very simple like uh, if uh, the query matches the title is greater than one, and the popularity is greater than uh, 31, assign this score. So they are like, uh, they combine together multiple features and they work together to produce a final score. So they have much more expressivity than a linear mode. And finally, the last step is the evaluation. So you want to say if your model is good or not, and there are multiple metrics that tells you if uh, your search uh, is good or not. You still need annotation to do that, so you need to know for some queries which documents are relevant or not. And here there are the main metrics that people use to evaluate the uh, learning to rank. There is precision that basically it says how many relevant documents I retrieved for my query uh, with respect of all the documents that I retrieved. So if I retrieve my 10 documents for the query and only five are relevant in the query, my precision is 0.5. Uh, then there is recall, that is how much you are covering of the relevant documents in your query. So if for your query, in all the collection that you have in the index, you have 100 uh, documents that are relevant, and with your query you retrieve 10 relevant documents, your recall is 0 0.1. You are returning only 10% of the relevant document in the collection. And, and it usually it's important to have these two uh, metrics good. So precision and recall are the main things that you want in a search engine. So before, when I was looking for the query class, that's a problem of recall. In that case, there is only one document relevant in the collection because I'm looking exactly for that document and, uh, and I'm trying to retrieve it and I, I can't. So it's a problem of recall. So you want to have these two. So basically, when you want to measure the overall quality of your search system, you use app score that is just the harmonic mean of precision and recall. So you want to have both them good. And finally, we have NDCG, that is another metric that look at the whole uh, result list for a query, and it returns a score that tells you how much the ranking is good. So the more you push relevant document on the top of the list, the higher this NDCG will be, okay? So, we decided some years ago to implement all this logic inside Solar, and the reason why we did that was that we were kind of doing it outside from Solar, but it was um, heavy from the performance and also 
from the point of view of uh, developing. So we decided to put it inside to make it faster and to make it easy to work with that. So before this used to be a feature, it was a Python function computing a value and uh, storing it somewhere. Uh, this is now a feature in Solar. So a feature is just a JSON snippet where you have the name of the feature, a type that is a Java class that implements that particular feature, and then some free parameters. And um, in this case, we're using Solar feature that uh, it allows us to reuse the Solar Lucene query syntax to specify the value of, that we want for that feature. So in this case, uh, checking if uh, the person, the document contains an executive person, is just checking uh, if uh, the query person matches into a field category and uh, if uh, the field primary position contains one of these terms. And that's all. So the, the, the engine will compute the score of the query for the document, and that will be the value of the feature. Uh, this is how you plug learning to rank inside Solar at the moment. So it's just adding these two fields inside uh, the Solar configuration. And this is an example of a model. So this is a linear model, and uh, again, it's just a JSON snippet that has a Java class that describes how to compute the model. And, uh, the feature that the model is using, and then how to combine them together. So in this case, we just have the weights for, for our feature. Uh, so benefits of the learning to rank plugin, as I said, uh, simple feature engineering. Uh, we reuse the solar search functionality, so like the syntax can reuse all the feature that solar already has, so, and it makes easy to uh, model feature by doing that. Um, we had some uh, improvements uh, by doing that. In, uh, we wanted improvements uh, in the search quality, and we wanted to do relevance tuning. So we didn't want to tune the relevance by hand anymore. Uh, so now Sambab is going to show you a quick demo uh, on learning to rank. Uh, for the demo, we use a simple Wikipedia JSON dump. Uh, so you know there is this simple uh, dump. It just contains the most uh, important Wikipedia article and it's 150,000 documents. Uh, so we are going to index in into Solar, and then uh, we're going to set up uh, some stuff that somebody is going to show you. Thanks. Hey, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, so first of all, you can find all the code related to this demo at this repository. So the entire repository is dockerized. We wanted to make the demo reproducible so that it's easy to actually take a look at uh, how we did this. And it's very simple code. Uh, we have outlined all the steps, and I'm going to follow them exactly so you can just, when you want to go back and reproduce this demo, you can. Uh, OK. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to bring up a Solar instance, which has the Learning to Rank plugin enabled. Uh, we, uh, so let's do that. So as you can see, uh, I just ran a Docker command, which brings up a container that uh, runs Solar. It is reachable uh, using this URL. So we have learning to rank enabled on this. Uh, and since our goal is to actually search the Wikipedia data dump, I have added a schema for the, that matches the actual data dump. So as you can see, we have some <coughs> 180,000 documents indexed, and uh, let's actually take a look at some of the documents we have. So as you can see, the schema contains, for example, the title of the Wikipedia document, uh, the wiki title, which is like the link. It contains links to other Wikipedia documents, which it references. It has the actual description of the document, and uh, like this is the first paragraph of the document. So you can see we have 
a bunch of these. Now when you actually query uh, for something like Brussels, we get a list of documents that it matches and we get it along with the score. So this is using like the default uh, solar TF-IDF methods. It's not using any learning to rank. <coughs> so let's actually, uh, let's try to think of some of the features that uh, more important documents might have. For example, if you take a look at these uh, fields and what Diego described earlier, can you try and come up with some features that might be more important for a document, like which more do important documents might have? Can you increase the first priority? Yeah, sorry. The number of incoming links. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's a good feature. The recency, I mean, the newer the article, the better. Yeah, sure. Uh, anything, anyone else? Popularity? Uh, yes, popularity, but right now in the schema, we don't have something like the clicks or reads. So if you had that data stored somewhere, that could be a feature, but for this uh, particular data set, we cannot use that. Any other? Ideas, yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, so that's a good one. Yeah, sure. That's another good one. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's two good ones. Uh, so yeah, uh, all of these are features we were able to come up with, and uh, surprisingly, they are very similar to the features I actually had written. So you, you see these features are very intuitive. You can like think of them on the spot and they're very relevant to how uh, these documents will look like. So if we actually take a look at the feature store, which has the definitions of the feature, we see we have something like the, uh, like the, frequent, like the number of words in the query that are contained in the description, the freshness, for example, uh, the number of incoming links that it has. Uh, we have the original score that is provided by Solar. And uh, again, like we have the, uh, the TF-IDF score in the title instead of the description. So uh, you were able to come up with all these features on spot and surprisingly they're very close to the original feature store that we had implemented. So you can see these features are very intuitive and you're, you basically need to just write them. It's a very simple, uh, it's just a JSON file, you can easily write them and uh, learning to rank helps you actually extract these values very easily. So uh, let's see an example of how these feature values look like. So for example, we have uh, the same documents we had in the earlier search, but we have the actual values of the features. For example, we can see that our query Brussels has a freshness score, it has the number of links that this uh, document has, uh, the score of the actual query in the description and the title. So the description score and the title score. So you can see it's very easy to extract these features once you have just provided that uh, JSON definition. And uh, next. Let's, uh, so what I did is, uh, now we have the features, we have the documents, uh, what we wanna do now is get the features out, train a model on it, and evaluate our results. So I wrote a simple web UI, uh, so that uh, you can give them to judges or people who are experts in the domain to mark the documents as relevant or not. So this is where we'll get a training data set from. And uh, it also has, uh, a bunch of screens for actually uh, taking a look at how our model performs, like the evaluation part. So for example, we can type the same query again, and we see like a list of, it's, it's the same uh, list of results, and you can see there's a button here uh, where they can mark the document as relevant or not. 
So, for example, this seems like a relevant document. I'm just marking it as relevant, and it's saving that particular document as a relevant document. So this is how you can build up a training set uh, by giving it to people who can just like look at, uh, type in a query, and then mark the documents as relevant or not. And also, you can see this this particular document comes third in the result. It's not the top result, and you see a lot of results that are not relevant to the actual query. So let's take a look at the baseline solar model where we haven't implemented any, uh, we, we, we don't have a learning to rank model at all. And we'll evaluate it on the same matrix that Diego described earlier. We'll check the precision, we'll check the recall, and we'll check the F-score. So. So yeah, uh, as you can see for the original model, uh, for the top five documents, if we just take a look at the top five documents returned by the query, we see it has an F-score of 0.38, a precision of 0.41, and a recall of 0.49. All of these matrix, the higher they are, the better kind of results that uh, your, your search engine is returning. So we can also take a look at how this, uh, like the original baseline solar model performs for each query. You can check for each query the F-score precision and recall, and you can actually check the documents that your annotators marked as relevant or not. So now let's try and use learning to rank to improve these results. So first thing we'll do is uh, we'll try to train and evaluate a linear model. A linear model will just take a look at the features we uh, had earlier Put, uh, like describe, and it will combine them using some weights, uh, by assigning some weights to each of the features. So to do that, all you need to do is run the script. So it, it, it gives you two options. You can either train a linear model or a lambda mart model. We want to train and upload a linear model. So that's done. So as you can see, a linear model right out of the box is not performing that well against the original solar model. Now, this might be due to a number of reasons. Uh, maybe the data set we have doesn't have enough examples. It's also because right now we have not normalized our features. So different features might have different distributions, and we're not combining them together in a meaningful way. So. If you want to achieve better performance with your linear, mo linear model, you can like basically try to f uh, reduce your feature set. There might be some features that are very noisy, that are like uh, basically deviating the uh, model from achieving ideal results, or maybe some of the features are overpowering the other ones. So we can actually compare how both these models uh, look like for each particular query. For example, here we have the linear model on the left side and the original model on the right. Uh, we can see that it, it's not performing that well. So for example, the linear model puts the first relevant result in maybe the sixth or the seventh position. Here it's in the second position. So let's try and improve on that. Uh, as Diego said, uh, we have better models right now, uh, like tree-based models, which take a look at the features and then basically go through a set of decisions. Uh, it, for an example, if they see that the number of links, uh, if a document has a lot of links, go down 
this particular path which checks the score of the query in the title and then so on. So it's able to combine the features in a much more meaningful way than just a simple linear model with weights attached to it. Uh, before we do that, <coughs> there's something interesting I want to show with the linear model. So uh, we had trained the linear model and we know about the features. So uh, what do you think, like, uh, if, if there's a feature like the number of incoming links, what kind of weight should it have? Should it have a positive weight, negative weight, any ideas? Anyone? Yeah, obviously. And uh, what about uh, so? What about uh, any other features that we had discussed? What about freshness? Do you think you would prefer a fresher document than an older one? Yeah. yeah so it, it's again a positive weight. Uh, what about things like the length of the document? Any ideas? Are we doing any? Oh, no, it's just taking a look. It's not normalizing the length at all. It's just taking a look at the length of the document. How do you think, what kind of feature that, like, would that be a positive feature or a negative feature? Yeah, yeah, sure. So if we take a look at our uh, linear model and the weights it actually learned, we see that for something like description length, it learned a negative weight. So it knows to penalize documents that have a very large description. For something like links length, it gave it a very high positive score. It gave it like a plus 31 weight. So it knows that it, it was able to learn and extract the fact that documents with more links are more important. So you can see it was able to do that with very little. We were able to set all of this up in a, like, uh, in very easily. Uh, so yeah, that's a linear model. Now let's try and train a tra uh, tree-based model. So we are using a tree-based module called Lambda Mart. Uh, it is available in a library called La Ranklib. Uh, let's try and train a very uh, basic model. So this tree-based model, it looks at a metric to optimize. Right now, what it's trying to optimize is the top 10 results. So it's basically trying to put the most relevant result in the first position, the second most one at the second position, and so on. It's not just looking at like the top 10 documents out of order and just figuring out if there is a document at, uh, it, from positions 5 to 10. Uh, those are marked at a lower relevance if the relevant documents were in the positions 1 through 5. So we have trained this model and we have uploaded it to Solar. And let's check how it performs. So we can see that the tree-based model actually performs much better than the original solar model. Uh, you get uh, like better metrics across the board. And if you check at like uh, a query level, how it was performing. So yeah, for example, we have the Lambda Mart model on the left and the original solar model on the right. You see it's put all the relevant results on the top, and that's typically what we want. And we didn't have to tune any of these weights manually. It was able to learn all of these weights, and it was able to generalize it across all the documents. So it's not just the first one. If we take any of the other queries we made, for example, Apple, we see that it's still it, it's tried to learn a general formula so that it works better across the board, not just for one particular query. Now, this, typically, if you're doing it manually, this would be very hard to do. But right now, all you have to give it uh, is a data set and a bunch of annotations uh, marked as relevant or not, and it'll automatically learn how to rank the documents. Uh, okay. So let's try and see how it performs for a query it has never actually seen before. Yeah, can you, let's try and annotate a new query. Can you give me a query? 
Any query? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we don't know how it will actually perform. Uh, what? Oh, keep in mind that this is simple. Wikipedia, so it has. It's only the 150,000, so what something popular. Yeah. Sweden. Sweden, okay. So we see that we have a bunch of documents from Sweden. Uh, let's try to mark something relevant that we see. So Sweden is all the way in like some 18th or 16th position here. OK, now this is a query that we have never seen before. Our, our model hasn't, like, doesn't know about it at all. It's not being trained on it. Uh, so let's just for now mark this particular document as relevant. So yeah, so we see it, it's here. Let's go back to our evaluation UI. And <laughs> the moment of truth, let's see how it does. Whoa, so it actually got it in the first place. Now, it never knew about this particular query. Uh, and this is the first time it saw it, and it actually put it in the first place, whereas the original solar model put it all the way in like the lower 20s. So yeah, uh, that's the power of learning to rank. Uh, you can also do something, uh, some other cool things with it. For example, now, what I'm, uh, if you take a look at the parameters that this script accepts, it, it basically asks for the number of trees, a metric to optimize, and the number of documents for that metric to optimize at. So basically, if you have something like uh, a, a UI where a user types in a query, and it automatically directs them to like the top first document that, it's, uh, that is returned by the search engine, then you basically want to uh, optimize the precision for the first document. Now, even though we see that it's not performing as well as our other model, but it specializes in something that it does. So it will try and boost the most relevant document always at the first position. It will make sure that the first document you have is always the relevant one. So if we actually take a look at the queries and the documents, we'll find that the first document will always be relevant. So for example, Apple first document is relevant. Berlin, again, first is relevant, and so on. So yeah, this is like a basic demo of how easy learning to rank is to use and how you can basically do away with a lot of manual labor, manually tweaking the ranker function with uh, learning to rank. Uh, yeah, we are open to questions. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so that was basically, oh, yeah. So the question is, uh, we had in the UI, uh, when we searched for Sweden, we had a bunch of queries that were marked as not relevant, and then we clicked on it, it became relevant. So what's the front end behind that? Yeah, that's not, I mean, that, that was something you built yourself, right? Yeah, that was something we built ourselves. So what we tried to build was a basic annotation tool so you can give the users a UI where uh, you can, let's say, pre-populate certain queries that you want them to uh, evaluate. They'll, they'll look at the query, uh, they'll get a list of documents, and they can simply click on the document they think is relevant. May I suggest that you do a thumbs up, thumbs down, which is unmarked, yeah. yellow <laughs> in the beginning, and then if you play the thumbs up, it became green, or red when you do a thumbs down. Yeah, so sure. you might uh, choose in both directions, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that definitely that's makes sense. Wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that's true. So, f oh, sorry.
Yeah. So the question is, why didn't we do any cross-validation for our machine learning models? Maybe. Why didn't we even mention it in the talk? And why we didn't mention it? So. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, we just wanted to showcase what learning to rank is capable of and how easy it is to set up. We didn't want to get into uh, the like. The problem that happens with that is you're not actually displaying how learning to rank works. You're actually showing off how it memorizes your entire training set. Effectively, you made the model memorize all the relevant results and return all those relevant results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, That's we, not exactly what one would be trying to achieve. Uh, people in the room, they never, they didn't know what was learning to rank at the beginning. So the, the focus of the talk is not how you train a model, but it's how the whole framework works and how like it makes elements better. Then you can do like, there is a machine learning course on Coursera about machine learning. If you want to know more about how to train a model, you can do the course learn about cross-validation and uh, machine learning techniques, but that will require a whole like, semester course, at least. Not that yeah, when you left uh, on that, but like, let's like, stop one mistake, you're True. practically trying to never like Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in the interest of getting something going, how do you know when to get more labeled data versus tweaking your features? Okay, so the question is, how do we know when to get more training data rather than tweaking our actual algorithms and the ranking function? Uh, do you wanna? I can get it. Yeah. So that's kind of like there's no real answer for that. Like as a the guy over there was saying, like uh, the problem with adding a lot of features is that uh, the risk is that you are overfit. So <coughs> the risk is that like basically your model. Uh, learn like really how to be good on your training set, uh, but not like uh, on, on, it doesn't generalize. So it doesn't, it, at that point it's not able to predict. So that understanding when you are like have too many feature and you're overfitting, it, be, it can be done by using like a validation database that contains query that you've never seen before. And, and then you evaluate your metrics on this new data set and you check the metrics, right? If the metrics like drop down on the validation data set, it means that your model didn't generalize, so it, it didn't really learn how in general to rank the documents, but it just like memorized your training set. So by doing that, you can understand if you have um, too many feature, reduce the feature, and then check the performance of your model again. If they are not good, you want to add new examples, okay? Um, yeah. Yeah? Uh, this is a search on document level. How is it to use these kinds of features and models to find part of the document? Is it viable or is it only on document level with these systems? So the question is, uh, right now, whatever we demonstrated was on a document level. How easy it is to extend it to parts of the document? So. Uh, most of those things would depend on how you've actually uh, structured your schema. If your schema is structured that, uh, in in your sense, that a document that you want to return is like parts of the document, mm -hmm. you can basically create a field for that, and then you can create features based on that, so that when you search for a query, uh, whatever feature value is computed, it gets boosted for whatever you think is relevant. Uh, for example, let's say you wanna, uh, you have a part of the document called as the links, and you want only want to search on the links and not on the rest of the content of the document. You can basically have a, a field in the schema that is like a list of links, and you can have a feature that only looks at the links, and you can make it like maybe. Uh, so when you're marking the documents as relevant, you only mark the documents which have the link as well. And so it will try to pick up on the fact that you're looking at the links and not the rest of the document. If you are looking for a particular block inside the document, what you can do is that you can split the document in blocks and then see the problem as learning to rank but done inside the blocks of the document. So you basically retrieve the document and then you go, you have another model that will rank the blocks inside the documents. So we will rank them and we'll put hopefully the, the block that is the one that you want